dad is at the boat and he's got paint and wag in the second up. Yeah, we need to turn the now. It's going to be better than it was. You heard it first here. Tensions building, we're about to put the first undercoat as it's all ready to go. The marathon's on. And they're a lovely colour. Of course, you might notice that they're actually matching. The gloves are matching right. Shaz's oh, jumper. Matty, matty. Top of Matt's head is actually matching the colour of Shaz's jumper as well. We're really close now, so I'm just getting demoralised because it just goes on and on. The never-ending boat refit. Oh. Just want to be out there on the boat drinking beer. Cut! This is Brilliant 2, a Kelly Peterson 44 built in 1978. This is us, the Smallwoods. And this is the story of our long overdue boat refit. Welcome along for the ride. Well, we just had a bit of a powwow with Matt in the car park about um, what to do next because we're pretty much up to the painting stage now. So I'll just show you the cockpit as it's looking. So this has all been filled and fared. So the filling was done with the epoxy bog and fairing means just lots of sanding. So it was filled and fared and filled and fared and then uh, painted with um, what they call a high build paint which um, basically also fills imperfections and then it's been sanded back this teak's now been given a bit of a sand there's still some work to do on this um, but we are ready to start painting with the top coat we're using a ball grip um, which is supposedly the best we're using a, a, a converter for it that's specifically for brushing rolling and tipping um, we'd love to just spray it, it'd be so easy, but um, you just can't do it uh, in an uncontrolled environment. It's all been washed down this morning by Matt, all the old um, tape has been removed. It's looking, uh, looking pretty good. It's looking um, a damn sight better than it did. We removed um, all the loose um, cracked gel coat from this whole area here and uh, inside here. This was completely crazed. The whole thing really, all across here. The other thing we've done up here was this. these areas here had a, a moulded in non-skid from, from uh, when the boat was built and um, it never really did anything, it just looked ugly and cracked. So we filled and fared all that and Matt has done a fantastic job across here. You'd never know. That was basically a raised section about three mil high here and then dropped down again there, ugly. Anyway, it's just smooth. He's, he's done a brilliant job. Uh, I wouldn't tell that to his face till after we paid him. <laughs> but, uh, I just wish we could spray it, but we can't. So um, boats were always tra traditionally, especially, especially old boats like this, were, were painted with a brush. And um, if we get a few brush strokes, brush strokes, well, so be it. We get some brush strokes for the boat. We actually rolled and tipped the hull back in well, how many, 12 years ago when Josh was just a twinkle in his dad's eye. But it's probably easier to do a big hull, big, you know, big curved areas rather than um, you know, in and around all this stuff. But anyway, we'll yeah, give I it think... a shot. It's going to be better than it was. You heard it first here. Tensions building. We're about to put the first undercoat as it's all ready to go the on. and they're a lovely colour of course you might notice that they're actually matching the gloves are matching right. Shaz's oh, jumper you got, Matty, Matty. You got one minute top of Matt's head is actually matching the colour of Shaz's jumper as well oh and Matt's already started and he's away no, I'm just having a look at it very very warm yeah. yeah it actually goes on all right though Matt yeah, and they're starting off with what are you starting off with, Matt? With the grooves. I'm in the grooves, and I've already got a first run. And he's running with it. I'm just trying to get coverage. It's very thin. Yeah. Out here we've got the paint mixing station, which I'm in charge of. I'm in charge. Let's go and see where they're up to. That's looking good. Flattening out. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so we're just about to put a third coat of undercoat on. So you have to put at least two. And to get the coverage, we've worked out that we need at least three. This section in here, behind when the hatch slides back, you don't see it. 
So we used this yesterday to do a test of what was going to give us the smoothest application because I initially thought that this undercoat might be able to be rolled and tipped. It hasn't really worked out like that. So we tested this, we divided it into three. Um, me and Matt, Matt here. Okay, there's Matt. This third here was rolled and tipped. This third here was just rolled. And this third here was just brushed. And as you can see, it's much for muchness. There's really not much in it. In fact, you can still see the rolling and tipping we tried to do on the first coat, which was like the worst. But we only put 5% thinner in it. And yesterday we worked out we really needed 10% thinner. So um, that may have been what was going on there. Anyway, in the end, after doing this test, we just decided to divide the thing in half and take half each and just go around with the cutting in brush and roller. So that's what we've been doing. We haven't been sanding in between undercoats because we're just trying to get the coverage on and then um, there's going to be a, a hand sand, light hand sand um, after this third coat, we think, to then get it to the top coat stage. Okay, we were meant to be putting the first top coat on the cockpit today, but that hasn't happened. And can you explain why, my love? Well, uh, yeah, I came in yesterday, spent all day here, and uh, thought I had it. And um, Matt came in today, he said, I don't know what you call this, but it ain't called what I call sanded. And um, he said there were lots of uh, dimples. The top coat paint will probably fill the dimples. But the trouble is, because the dimples aren't sanded, you rely on a mechanical, um, a mechanical bond between the top coat and the... Uh, and the primer. So um, he's been here since eight o'clock since eight o'clock this morning. We actually got a lot done. I'll just show you where we're at. This is to Matt's satisfaction. You can see there's not a single dimple in that. Yeah, it? it looks amazing. It's very smooth to the touch. And yeah. I have to admit that um, going that extra bit is worth it. So anyway, we've done um, these horizontal surfaces. This is to Matt's satisfaction. These two, the whole all of the back down there. He sanded these, there's, there's not a mark in them. So, are we top coating tomorrow? Is that the plan? We'll see. Matt's gonna come down here and inspect my work that I've done this afternoon. We're, we're really close now, so I'm just getting demoralized because it just goes on and on. The never ending boat refit. Oh. I'll tell you what, I'll never go to my grave and be on my deathbed saying, oh, I wish I'd sanded that bit of teak bit more. I will never, never, ever be saying that. I just want to be out there on the boat drinking beer. Not working on it. So it's a beautiful day down at Port of Ely. We're on um, day two, second coat of the uh, of the top coat. I've just mixed the paint and I've just given it to the painter and tipper aka Shaz and Maddie and they're just starting our second coat, hopefully the last coat, but um, we'll see how it goes on. Let's just go in and see what we're up to. Here we go. That's where all the action is. So what we do here is we roll the paint on, first of all, gets it nice and even. And then a couple of swipes across with a brush. Takes the um, texture of the roller. Also, oh, also takes the bubbles out that the roller puts in. And with self-leveling um, polyurethane paint, and it should come out as a glossy finish, almost spray paint like it will do. So with this all grip, there's a very small window where you can recoat, and the window is from 16 hours to 24 hours. So it's like you have to leave it 16 hours before you can give it a very light sand, um, and it will only remain repaintable up to 24 hours after you've put it on. If you leave it too long, you've got to sand all the gloss off so that you've got a mechanical key for the next coat. We don't want to do, so we got down here first thing this morning. So our timing's going pretty well. Got to use a nice, good quality brush. Very fine, sorry, <laughs> very fine bristles that, that don't fall out. Keep the brush quite dry. So, so we've got other brushes up here which uh, can be swapped as soon as the brush gets a bit too much paint on it or the paint starts drying, just swap for another brush. The idea is that you're not actually painting with the brush, 
you're just um, you're tipping out. And allowing the paint to level itself. Helping, giving it a helping hand. Yeah. And because it's linear, when you do that, you're basically lining up the molecules in the paint. And so by lining up the molecules in the paint, it allows it to pull tight. That's what it does. It actually settles out over a space of a couple of hours, doesn't it? So three weeks roundabout, you'll, you'll come back three weeks later and you'll say, God, it's getting flatter. It actually says on the spec sheet that <laughs> it's 24 hours to take free, and then it's um, three days to light use, and then two weeks to full cure. That's right. And in that whole two week period, and maybe a little bit more, it's still shrinking and still lining up. That's amazing, isn't it? Here we are almost 48 hours after the second coat of All Grip Top Coat has gone on the cockpit. We couldn't help ourselves, we had to just come down and have a look at the finish. I'll show you uh, what we got. This is it folks, this is the end result of all that hard work and I'll tell you what, that is not bad for a rolled and tipped finished but we did get a couple of runs on the verticals you know what it doesn't matter in the scheme of things it just looks more than a million times better than it was this is where we painted up to this is exactly what it was like we've just filled the whole lot and you you never know and um we're very happy with it go off